The first two minutes of this video go by very quickly as I give you an overview about setting up for the socks that you'll see being knitted. These are my Kiss Me Quick socks for the FG3 Kiss Loom. The captions go by quite fast. Don't worry about trying to read them. Here's all the information that I'm giving you summarized. And of course, I'm saying it all out loud during the first two minutes also. This information is a free bonus. The pattern is, of course, available written, and my intention here is to show you how to knit this type of heel and toe. Today I'd like to show you the afterthought heel and decreased toe designed specifically for use on the KISS FG3 loom. They are from my pattern, Kiss Me Quick Socks, but of course you can use the same technique on any number of patterns, substituting for whatever kind of heel and toe were included in the pattern. The emphasis in this video is going to be on these heel and toe techniques, but of course everybody always wants to knit the sock they're seeing. Therefore, the written pattern is available for download on Ravelry, and I will also go over it here. However, here I will just be describing it quickly. There is much, much more detail in the pattern. I'm knitting size 6 socks with worsted weight yarn here. Techniques such as casting on and kitchener stitching are fully covered in other videos, so here I'm not going into detail, just saying do it. Set the loom up for 40 stitches and to knit in the round. 40 is the maximum the one I'm working on can knit. Cast on using double E-wrap. The first peg to cast on and the first stitch of every row should be the middle peg on one of the end sliders. Quite important. Knit 12 or more rows of knit two purl two ribbing. You may knit more rows of that if you want to. Now knit 30 plain stockinette rows. It is okay to knit more stockinette rows and longer ribbing up to a certain point, but don't knit to the point that the sock would cover the calf. It's not designed with enough room for most people's calves. This is intended to be worn as an ankle sock. My sock top rows are all complete, the ribbing and the part of the cuff that will be above the heel. This is the last stitch knitted. There are 17 needles across here, pegs actually, and we're going to knit 18, 19, 20, 21. Even though 20 stitches is half, we're going to knit a few waist yarn rows in a completely, completely different color so it will be easy to find and remove later. The minimum number of rows that should be knitted is two, but I'm going to knit more in this case because I think it will make it easier to hang. And we're not going round and round, and we're not cutting the main yarn. We're going to knit back and forth on these pegs. On this loom, it's not possible to knit a bigger sock than this one, but if you had longer sides, so there were more pegs on the sides, you could use a larger peg count and knit for a bigger around foot. To be clear, it is possible to knit this sock longer. I'm going to make it fit a six and a half, but if the same circumference would fit a seven or eight or even larger shoe, we can just knit more rows. That's not the problem. The problem is, or the limitation is, it's not really a problem, that we have 40 pegs. We're getting five stitches per inch. That makes the sock eight stitches, eight inches, sorry, eight inches around. And that will only fit a limited size range. In general, in U.S. sizing, it fits sizes 6 to 8 quite well. The way you determine sock size 
is something that is presented in all kinds of places. I tell you it, all about it in my Socks of All Sorts for Knitting Looms book. And there are two ways to do it. Well, actually, there are three ways to do it. Uh, my favorites are two of them. Either measure around your foot at the widest part with the foot relaxed and subtract one half inch or measure around your foot at the widest part but pull the tape quite tightly. I get the same measurement doing it those ways. Another method is to measure around your relaxed foot and then subtract 5 to 10 percent of that measurement. 5 to 10 is the range based on both personal preference and the kind of yarn you like to use. But I usually use one of the first two methods. And that's how I come up with this sock, which because of the gauge gets eight inches around, fitting sizes six to eight usually. Although if you are a size 10 foot, but your feet are long and narrow, it may fit you fine. All right, eight rows knitted. Eventually, we will be wanting to pick up the main yarn stitches, and you can see how easily they show up against the contrasting yarn. That's the reason for the contrast. We'll also be hanging on both sides of the work, which is the reason that we wanted eight rows to make a good stretchy space. Let me restate that. We'll be hanging on both sides of the loom. We'll be hanging work on both sides of the loom. Snip. Push this out of the way. For now, that's all we need the green yarn to do. It's going to perform two functions for us. One is simply to mark the heel position. You could hardly miss that. That's where I want it to go. The other is already hinted at to allow us to pick up and rehang main yarn stitches without snipping. There are other ways to get into the knitting and rehang stitches, but this method of keeping them alive on waste yarn is trouble free and seems to me like a good thing to do, especially for beginners. Now here's the last main yarn stitch. We now simply resume wrapping and knitting completely normally all the way around the loom again. And we knit all the rows that are needed to reach the toe. When we have gotten to that point, we'll work the toe. And finally, we'll finish that heel. All the foot rows have been knitted. Let's quickly review. Ribbing rows, leg rows below the ribbing, Heel position held on waist yarn. Foot rows, not including the heel, which we haven't knitted yet. And now we are ready to shape the toe. This toe is shaped with decreases. Every decrease goes like this. Lift the end stitch on each side and move it one peg inward. And here's the fourth one. So you can see that we are decreasing by four stitches every time we do this. Now loosen the nut, slide the end peg slider in so that yet again the pins line up and make a rectangle on the inside of the loom. Tighten the nut back. Double check the positioning before getting it all the way tight. Same deal on the other side. Loosen, slide, align the pins in a rectangle, by which I mean obviously they're straight across here. They don't need to be here or here. They need to be here to make the rectangle complete. That's what keeps your stitches even. Perfect that position. 
finish tightening down. Now for this pattern, you might do anything after <clears throat> the decrease for any number of patterns. But remember, this is the final stitch on the row or round. And the first one is the middle stitch. So the decrease is finished. These two will be knitted over as though they were one stitch. In every position where there are two stitches on a peg, that's how we'll behave. This was the final stitch of the last round or row. I'll use the terms interchangeably here. So we start knitting around. For this pattern, we're going to knit two rounds and then work another decrease. In other patterns, you might use the same technique, but have a different number of rounds. See what I just did? Although I've lifted these over one at a time, it counts as knitting them over together because it was all done on the same trip around the loom. So I'm going to go around twice and get back to you. You know how to knit. Here's the already completed mate to the sock, and I want you to look at it so you can envision what happened. Here was our last main row of all the needles or pegs in work, 40 stitches in this case. And here you can see where two knitted together because we moved over the end stitches which are here. Now we've knitted two rows in that position and we're going to move on up and do the same thing again. So that's how the sock toe keeps getting smaller. We're going to do these decreases throughout. And did you see what happened when I moved this? Because the yarn tail is nearby my stitch grew and then I jiggled everything and dropped this stitch off. Such a thing could happen to you. Now this stitch is too big and this stitch is too big. But they just went back to normal. Just be aware that you may have to tighten up your yarn tail. Moving in. And we were knitting on 40 pegs. Those last two rounds were knitted on 36 because once we move these stitches over, this batch of pegs, the ones on the end, weren't knitted last time. Now this batch of pegs, second one in, will also be omitted. So we will be down to 32 stitches. Always worth taking the time to be really careful about positioning those end pegs. By the way, I do it with my fingertips on this little loom. If that doesn't work for you, put a wide screwdriver here. But be gentle. It is possible to over tighten nylon nuts. And here we will begin around and do two more rows. We're going to do quite a few decreases. And every time we will knit two rows afterwards until the last time. And again, this time and every other time, we can either lift these over both at once or one, two, as long as they both get knitted in the same round. So on around I go for two more rounds, and I'll see you in a minute. Two more rounds are completed. You can see where the first decrease occurred. It tends to make a little diagonal line. And we knitted two rows. There's the next diagonal line. And so we've completed two rows after that. We're ready to make this decrease. It goes just exactly like the others. They all do. Move over the stitch on the end to the next peg inward. Oh, 
and just the ends. Now on each end of each board, there will be three pegs not included in the knitting. Three empty ones. We do not go back and reuse them at any point. Because of this moving in, you occasionally get this. That's some fabric getting caught. It's not very difficult to release it. Just be aware if things start to feel funny that it doesn't drop down as easily, you have to help it when you start doing decreases. We finished that one, that one, that one. Let's see, one, two, three, and the two rows in here. So it's time to do this decrease. It goes exactly like the others. The fabric's getting smaller and smaller. And it's still a tube of fabric, but it's making a wedge or a point shape towards the toe, which is exactly what we want. On most people, anyway, the toe gets skinnier than the rest of the foot. And I bet you saw what I forgot to do. But it's okay to do it in this order, too. Move over the stitches. Just make sure you don't catch them on the pins. That's why I normally do it prior to moving the ends in, because it's less likely to happen. But watch this action, and you can always avoid it. Lift around the pin and replace it and tighten up. And I'm ready to go around twice more. Now we're up to here. We're ready to make another decrease, just like the others, which I'm going to do while you watch, and also tell you that at this point, the knitting becomes a little bit more difficult, because your ends are down inside the work. Well, inside the framework, actually, of the loom would be a better way to describe it. And you may find that the angle that normally works for you doesn't. But it is possible to knit. We don't have to do many rows in this more challenging position, so don't despair. First, let's get this evened up. Now there are five empty pegs on each end of each row, so that's four positions, meaning that the total reduction in stitch count around is now 20. Since we reduce four stitches at a time, it goes pretty fast. Here's my working yarn. One thing is you may find it easier to do one stitch at a time around the ends even if, like me, you normally wrap a whole side or even the whole loom at a time. But with my thumb keeping a little bit of tension on the yarn, I find it that I'm less likely to drop a stitch. We'll knit around this side so that we can knit around an end together and look at that technique again. Basically, do what works for you. But that's something that works for me that may assist you. And by the way, every time I use this hook on camera, people ask me about it. It's made from a pen and a nail, and I have a whole video on how to do it yourself. Here we are coming to the end. One thing is the wrapping is not as simple because we don't have much freedom of movement with these sort of in the way. And here's what I do. Yarn towards me on this side of the peg, thumb on the top, yarn away. Now it can't go anywhere but where I wanted it to. It couldn't slip off the top because my thumb was in its way. Yarn towards me, thumb down, yarn away, 
angle the tool however you can get in there and work it over. A lot of times I hold this up against my body while I'm working rather than doing it on the table because from a looking down on it with it on yourself position it can be a little bit easier but I can't do that in UC and you see how well it, it works so around I go the rest of two rounds. We are ready for our final decrease. There were seven stitches on each long side knitting. When we decrease there will be five. That is about as tight as I like to make my knitting in the round opening. Technically speaking, you can go farther, but there's not much room inside the opening if you go past this point. I'll show you what we've got, and I don't have any trouble with five. Four and three are possible, but I don't enjoy doing them, basically, and I think this gets the toe to small enough to proceed and get a good shape. When we knit the next rows, there will still be enough room to drop the fabric through. It moves pretty freely. If we were to move this farther in, let me do so temporarily. You can succeed, but now my finger won't go in the opening, so there's more of this wiggling and care to make sure the fab fabric drops down. So if you want to try it, especially with a smooth slippery yarn, Feel free that you can go narrower than five stitches per side with this loom. But five stitches per side is still in the easy knitting range. After that, it gets tougher. And I don't guess I finished moving this one in. can still get my finger there, though not roomily, so the knitting will drop on down with gentle tugging without a big deal. Now, we're going to make an exception to what we've been doing. We have been knitting two rounds after each decrease. For this last one, I recommend three. But while I am saying what I recommend, let me point something else out to you. This is what you get with the pace that I have recommended. I like this shape. But if you wanted to taper more gently, like this, you could, by knitting three rounds between each decrease the whole distance. It would make a longer, more gently pointed toe. And it entirely depends on personal foot shape and taste, which is superior. There's no better or worse way in general. It's just what fits you. All right, all the rows of the toe are finished. These last three were on a total of 16 pegs, making 16 stitches per round. Five on each side, so five times two is 10. Three on each end, so that's an additional six, 16. Now pull out about 18 inches of main yarn, break the yarn or snip it, and set it aside finish up by knitting contrasting yarn for several rows. Four is a minimum. I think I knitted seven rows. It's not critical. These are just place-holding rows. Let's just snip the yarn and now I can lift the fabric up off the pegs and the pins and then pull it down through the loom be much easier than pulling the whole sock through that little opening. We don't need this waste yarn to stay very long. Next we're going to close the toe and then it will be not needed. Here's the main yarn tail that we left. Time to thread that into a yarn needle. Now we're going to go around 
running it through each of the main yarn stitches on the final row. Try not to poke any of the waist yarn stitches. All the way around. The bright green makes it really easy to see what are the stitches I really want to catch. That's why with waste yarn it's normally best to use a color that contrasts strongly with your main yarn. Usually you want to be able to find the main yarn stitches when you use waste yarn. Before we do anything else, let's unravel the waste yarn. Aha, uh -huh. there's an example of I did what I told you not to. I stitched through it. So I had to look very carefully. I've done it again here, darn it. I'm going to blame the fact that I'm working behind the camera. Can't see very well. There we go. Now here's our end. Now we're just going to treat this last row like a drawstring. Pull it in real tightly and stitch a couple of times across the opening to reinforce the toe. And even though it's a drawstring, it's on so few stitches of the hole that it seems to make a neat closure. It doesn't pucker. So it's all closed. I've stitched back and forth to make sure that it doesn't come undone. And now I'm just going to weave in the yarn tail for a couple of inches. The two socks, they are a great match, which this yarn is very good about. But the reason I'm pointing this out is this is the top and bottom view. If you look down on your foot wearing the sock, you would see this, although this is the heel, so it's what it looks like on the bottom as well. This one is the side view. What I did is take the top and bottom, open it out so you can see how it would look running up the side of your foot. And there you can clearly see the three stitches that were made on these ends. Moving in and moving in. Actually these all stay the same place, but since we decrease along the next one to them, it makes a straight area here and a tapered area here. So now, there's a heel position. We want to knit a heel like this into this position. It's time to knit our heel, but before we do, I need to show you something so you'll understand what's going on. When a knit stitch is formed, it goes like this. Three stitches, four stitches, five stitches, six stitches. We will be hanging these stitches that are held on waist yarn. But you need to look down here. The other side, or the other end of the stitch, looks just the same. We could turn it upside down and that's why we can hang the loops that are on both sides of the waist yarn. But whole loops consist of one, two, three, four, five. Because of the nature of this curve forming up here and then down here, you always get that one fewer whole stitch. Really there's half of one here and half of one here, but they're not useful to us for hanging, which is why we knitted an extra stitch. Now we're going to hang it and get rid of that extra stitch, but had we not knitted one extra, we would have come up with one too few. There would have been a way to handle that too, but I think this way is superior. If you recall, we started here, knitted down, and then knitted 21 
rather than 20, which would have been the true half here. Then knitted in all these rows of waist yarn and resume knitting with main yarn. So this will be the 20 stitch end. This will be the 21 stitch end. And we're going to hang this so that this will be at the top of the back of the heel and the extra stitch we will double up on the center needle. Work needs to come up through here. Here is my first stitch. On one side it will hang on the first peg, the other end it will hang on the second peg of the end. Obviously one stitch per peg. The tricky part is finding them and keeping them from popping off. Back you go, naughty stitch. There we go. You have to poke around between the arms of the green stitch to find the area that we should be hanging. That's one of the main reasons for using a really contrasting yarn. In showing you, I knocked that one off too. It can help you to find a really, really fine tool. This is actually a teasing needle for laboratory work. You get them at science supply places. And it reaches between the arms of the green yarn nicely. Even better than my favorite tool. Don't get hung up on the opposite pins. Reach and make sure you do get the piece that's between the green yarn edges. If you reach too far down, you'll get a stitch, but it will allow the stitches above it to ravel, which is certainly not what we're after. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is the center peg, and we'll hang a second stitch on that. I have to admit, in order to make these easy for us both to see, I've gone around in advance, teased them out, and pulled them up a little bit. These stitches at the very corner can be the hardest to find. Just be patient, poke around, and read across the columns of waste yarn to make sure that you haven't skipped any. If you don't end up with the right number, something is wrong. You've missed one, even though it was hard to spot. The extra pointy tool is really helping me here. In a moment, you'll see a split occur. There it is. But I can rescue it with that pointy tool. And we're about to find the last of the 21 stitches. Aha. There we go. I should make a couple of points here. One is that the correct strand is always at the V formed by the green stitch. Let me show you what I mean. See how each stitch forms a V? And they do it upside down as well. It'll just be in the opposite half a column, basically, because, again, of that way that the yarn goes up and then down. So there are multiple places that you could try to pick up a piece of yarn. But the one you want, see the V there? That's the one. The next V. And if you cannot see this availability of the yarn, keep poking around till you can. There we go. There isn't any difficulty stretching across the work. But you just have to be patient. Keep your fingers pressing down on the nearby stitches and work slowly around. This part cannot be rushed. 
on the plus side, once we get it on, we don't have to do anything with the waste yarn right now. That'll be later, and it'll be very easy. We can just start knitting. So in order to finish this up where I can see better, I'm going to go the rest of the way around off camera. Remember this side, there is no need to double up. We have the exact right number of stitches. Everything is hung. Before we proceed, there is one option. I want to show you a sock that's already knitted. If you've knitted socks before, I'm sure you've noticed that this area where the heel joins the rest of the sock often develops a hole right about there because it's under stress at the direction changes. Even though these waist yarn rows will all be gone and there's no knitting gap between the main yarn top and bottom, well, top and bottom, where it's stretched, that may happen because I still had waist yarn and it's in my way I just snipped enough so that we can reach in and if we want to pick up the strand that runs along the side of the work between the two areas we've hung I'm trying to make sure I don't split it with what's going on here and hang it on the middle of the end pegs if we had hung this by first transferring to um, circular needles and there was no waste yarn in the middle, you wouldn't have to clip it as I did. And if you feel able to poke around and find it reliably without snipping, you may be able to do that too. But it can tighten up that little triangular area effectively. In order to make my heels match perfectly, I need to start this, the next heel at the same place this one did, in the red just after the navy and before it goes to red and brown and then navy again and orange to make the heel tip. So I'm going to find my original yarn tail because that tells me where the beginning of the whole sock is and without making a yarn loop so that I don't have a knot I'm going to start on the same needle as the sock originally began on and knit three rounds. Remember I've got two stitches, a lifted one in addition to the regular stitch on that peg. and on around I go. Later on, the yarn tail that I'm going to now just push down between the sides, later on I can weave that in neatly and secure it without a knot because this is not a spot where I'd like to have one. And now we're back to easy peasy knitting. Knit around three complete circuits. Three rows have been knitted otherwise known as rounds. We'll move in each of the end stitches and decrease just as we did for the toe. This is made almost as the toe is made but not quite because the pace at which we decrease is a little different using three rows here for the first two times. And that's what we're going to do after this decrease. Three more complete rows or rounds of knitting. All normal knitting. The very first one after I hung the heel area of the sock from the waist yarn, that one is a little bit stiff to knit because stitches have been pulled through something else. But the rest of these are a piece of cake, totally normal stuff. So on around I go, you too. So now there are six heel rows knitted, three, then a decrease. 
another 3, and it's time to decrease again. And following this one, we will resume the pace that we used on the toe of decreasing every two rows. So after this decrease, I'll knit two rounds, then I'll decrease again and knit two rounds. And I will keep doing that, as will you, until there are only five stitches in work along each long side. This part is just like the toe, so I'm not going to make the video long and boring by doing the same thing again. You'll, you can go back and refer to the toe if you need to, but I think you'll be fine just remembering. Decrease, which we just did, knit two rounds, decrease, knit two rounds, decrease, knit two rounds. And when these center ones are the only ones in work, don't decrease again, we'll do something different. I've just made the decrease that puts five in work on each side. I will knit one time around and then either scrap off on waste yarn. Scrap off means knit a few rows and release from the loom as we did for the toe or lift off all of these stitches on knitting needles. Whichever you prefer is fine because we're going to Kitchener this toe closed. Or if you really hate Kitchener and you have a seam you like, you can use that. And I think I just said Kitchener the toe closed, but of course that's not true. This is the heel. My round is complete and I'm ready to snip the main yarn. Leave enough when you do so to use for your Kitchenering or the other seam that you use to close the toe. Now the 16 total stitches are stacked up on each other. Eight stitches on this side, eight on this side. I'm using a circular knitting needle to hold them and I'm not going to Kitchener right now because I still have a little bit to do on the end. I'm also not going to show you how to Kitchener this end closed because that's something that you may already know and I've covered in lots of other videos which you can find in my Loom Knitters documentaries. What you can't find there is what we're going to do next, how to free this area. I could go in through here, but I prefer not to because even though these stitches are held, I don't want to disturb them. So I'm going in from the sock cuff. Here it is, diving in. Here's our beautiful green. And usually what will work the best is very, very carefully snip the waste yarn only and do the same thing at the other end of the first row of waste yarn stitching. And then if it's sturdy and smooth, we'll probably be able to grab the cut end of it and just pull it on out. That time it broke. So you can see it released a few stitches and we need to do the same thing again. Since that was my experience, I'm going to make it easier on the fabric in my hands by freeing a good tail here and going down and snipping in one additional place. Since it didn't want to pull out a long amount. There we go. It pulled out the, the snipped area. Where well, I've already gone into the waste yarn and snipped it in order to lift those edges. It's a little bit messy. Fortunately, it will ravel back without much of a fuss. There we go. It's free. 
Now I'll do the same thing on the other end. There we go. As though it had never been there. Here we go. Foot, toe, cuff, heel. And the heel will be grafted closed in this position. So that the finished bottom of the sock looks like this. Toe, heel with a flat part at the back of the heel. Those are the eight remaining stitches. If you turn it sideways, there's the heel. Let's get the finished sock out of the way and look at one more thing. Remember where we started the heel. There's going to be a yarn tail. So that needs to be secured otherwise these stitches will grow and you'll get a hole. And also there's a yarn tail at the very beginning which needs to be woven in. I already took care of the one at the toe so that will leaves as soon as we're done catching the ring the heel that one has to be woven in and that's all there is to it here's the unfinished sock on a foot so that you can see where the heel closure falls here's the finished sock on the foot body of the person up the leg bottom of the heel toe down here so there is the closure and for this reason it's not right where the weight bearing area of your heel is but still it's an area that would rub and be irritated if you didn't make a very smooth seam so whether you kitchener or not keep that in mind 